Today we're going to talk about some slugs and some earwigs and cabbage loopers and we're going to see if we can figure out how to keep them out of your garden or at least stop them from decimating everything. It's been so wet and so cool this spring that that's one of the major complaints. People are saying that their stuff's coming up or it's not coming up at all. They're just not seeing anything and it's just a case of as soon as that poor little green sprout sticks its head up at night the slugs are coming through, the earwigs are coming through, and they're just eating them right down to the ground and they don't stand a chance. Uh, as far as slugs go, there's a couple of things that you can do. You've probably heard of most of them, where you take a small tin and you fill it up with beer and you put it in the ground and the slugs will come on. They love the yeasty smell of the beer. They go in, they drown. They can't get, <laughs> they can't get out, but at least they've had a happy ending. Some other things that you can do, You've got copper tape that you can pick up. If you're really artsy fartsy, you can get yourself an embossing pen and you can make yourself really fancy little ones. And this you would just put on the edge of your bed, hammer it in. And they seem, apparently they get like little electric shocks. They just really don't like going across it and that's gonna keep the slugs out of your garden. If you've got leftover wire like this, you can try laying it down and just stapling it on and see if that helps. I'm not too sure. I'm thinking it would work. I'm just not too sure of the width of it. Some companies have, you can get this mesh and it's really nice. It's light. If you've got pots, you can slide your pot in and have the mesh coming up so you don't have to worry about the slugs coming up. It's really easy to cut. And then you can just use thumbtacks if you want and put that down as a barrier. So it's, it's easy, it's effective. Um, it just might not be what you wanna do. It might be too pricey, especially if you've got a huge garden that might not work. And in that case, I would suggest the, the old beer in the tin can or margarine tub. Um, what else can you do other than hand picking them? Oh. If you eat oranges or grapefruits in the morning, when you cut them in half, once you finish scooping everything out and indulging, go put your rinds upside down in the garden because the slugs will go and they'll hide underneath it. They're attracted to the scent, they hide underneath it. And in the morning, you can just turn it over and go, whew, all right, toss it in the garbage. Uh, what else can you do? You can use a board. You can just use any kind of wood as long as it's slightly elevated off the ground because again, they're going on the damp ground they hide underneath it in the morning, just pick it up, turf them in a, in a bucket of soapy water. You can pay your kids, go pick slugs. If you get this many, I'll give you this much. Or if you get, <laughs> if you get this many, you can play your game for that much longer. So those are just some of the easy things that you can do. Watering in the morning, letting this lovely wind dry the top surface of your soil out helps too because slugs like the damp and that's what they're going to go for. Uh, same thing with sow bugs and pill bugs. If you want to get rid of those, the easiest method is simply just to get rid of the leaf litter and that kind of debris or dry out the surface. They are more related to a lobster than anything and they have to have the, they have to have the wet to be able to breathe. So if it's all dried out, they're going to die or they're going to go someplace else. Earwigs. Earwigs make much the same kind of damage that slugs do. My poor old lettuce, it got chewed up really bad. So I handpicked a whole bunch of them off. They like to hide in the center. Earwigs, again, don't like the light, just like the slugs. They want it nice and damp and dark. They usually come out at night and I've got one neighbor whose kids used to just be absolutely appalled with her. They were just so embarrassed because she would put on one of those miner lamps and she'd go out at night into her garden and she'd shine the light onto the plants and all the earwigs would jump off and she'd pick them up, throw them in a bucket of soapy water. But she, her kids were absolutely mortified. Mom, what are you doing? What are you doing? You can do that. You can go out into your garden in the middle of the night if you want to see if that's what's actually getting your plants. Shine a light on it. Put a piece of paper, white paper underneath. Shake your plant. They'll drop off like crazy. 
You don't need to get rid of all of them either though because they do eat aphids. So if they're not totally decimating your garden, leave some of them alone. They're not all that bad. One of the other tricks I just learned, I haven't tried it, but I'm going to today and I'll let you, I'll let you know how it works. I have cats, so I'm not really certain about this. They apparently really love sardine juice with a squirt of lemon. So if you've got earwigs, you get yourself a tin can with your sardine juice in it, with your squirt of lemon, and you bury it in the ground. That's it. <laughs> and apparently the earwigs will go to it and they will drown in it. I'm not sure this is gonna work. This is one of the reasons why. But I am gonna try it, I wanna see. I'm curious. And this isn't where it's gonna stay. It's gonna go where I actually have the earwig problem and it's gonna go underneath some of the leaves. So I should be all right with the cats. But that was that. So the only other thing I can suggest, the only other thing I can suggest you can use is your, uh, your slug and snail bait. I use this as a last resort. It has to be moist. Your ground has to be wet. You put this on. It should be fine, but when it says keep away from children, I'm not so sure I want it in my garden. And the other one is your diatomaceous earth. This one is highly effective. It only works when it's dry, so after it rains, it loses its effectiveness. It is incredibly powdery, so if you're using it, try to remember to do it on a calm day or to make sure you wear a mask, okay? It's not good for any soft tissues. But you would just put that around your plants. Anything that, anything that has a soft body um, crawls across it, this diatomaceous earth just carves them up so they get desiccated, they just dry out and they die. But it is not, oh, I've lost the word. It doesn't care if you're a ladybug or you're an earthworm or you're an earwig, earwig or a slug whatever goes across is going to get sliced up so be careful when you're using it because you don't want to get rid of your pollinators okay and that's about all i've got if you can keep the surface dry if you can try beer or you can try salmon juice or sardine juice go for it use these guys as the last resort <laughs>